I've literally filmed this video, like, I filmed the first video of what it was supposed to be once and then I realised how emotional it was making me so then I've tried to make about four attempts of me explaining why it made me emotional but then I'm being too perfectionist about how I'm explaining my emotions where like I'm just stopping the video and starting again but I don't want to do that because it's just so stupid. So basically I went to go and film a and A. I don't know if I'm still answering the questions. I probably am, I'm not sure. You guys asked me questions like three, four months ago and I filmed the video, but I never posted it because by the time I went to go and post it, I my answers were completely different to like what I actually felt when I filmed the video because I filmed it when I was really happy and then when I went to post it, I was really depressed. So like, it just made no sense as to why I would post it. Um, so I wanted to, film the video again with the same questions and the first question was what is the biggest thing you learn in 2021 sounds like a really simple question it is a simple question but me overthinking and just being over emotional i got really sad about the question because i realized i had no answer for it i can't help but look back at that year and just see negativity because it ended negatively which is silly because so much I learned throughout the year, but I just cannot, like, I, I almost need to, like, think about it on my own because I can't come on here and, like, explain what I've learned because I feel like I've learned nothing. And I know that in that video that I filmed before, I had, like, a really good answer. And I don't even remember what that answer was, but right now I just can't see it. Like, I can't see it positively, which is just rubbish. But, like, I know that I had such a good year and I learned so much and I got over a lot of things but then it feels like I've just like gone through it all over again where like I felt like I learned something and then I just dropped everything that I've learned and now I'm like back to square one and I it's almost like everything that I learned went void because I'm back feeling it all over again you know I don't know if I should answer that question because I just feel like I don't have a good answer and I I really just I'm struggling so much to like see like my life positively which is just rubbish because i know i've had such a good time but it's just not there like i'm not mentally there and yeah it is something so silly to get emotional about and i don't want to be posting a video online of me crying like i'm not one of those like emotional youtubers but i need to stop getting so caught up with being perfect on camera, being perfect in front of you guys. Like I'll come on camera and share a hard time that happened in the past. I won't come on here and say like, this is what I'm going through right now and it is rubbish and I am struggling. So I need to learn to do that. <sighs> I, I didn't realize how much that was gonna hit me in the moment. So that will be something that I will be thinking about outside of this video. But I'm really sorry for starting that so depressingly, but I just wanted to be real and honest with you guys and not sugarcoat how I feel. Um, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna carry on. <laughs> I'm gonna carry on with this Q and A now. I've already started, I might as well finish. Um, and I look pretty so i'm not gonna waste that i'm not gonna waste my makeup i'm not gonna waste my hair even though i had a bad hair day i really hate the fact that i've had two videos back to back where i'm just sad but unfortunately this is where i am right now in life and if i cry i cry you know and that's that's just that <coughs> whoa but this question does lead on to the other question which is how are you feeling about where you are in life right now <laughs> this question is too complicated um I've been feeling a lot better these past few days, like the past four or five days, I've been feeling a lot better and I think that comes down to just me being still in God's presence and just allowing him to guide me rather than me trying to like force my emotions to go somewhere or like be really positive because when I feel like I have to do that, I will just feel negative. So I've been feeling a lot more vulnerable, even though it's difficult, the vulnerability has helped me to feel the feelings but to also dwell in God's promises where the feelings feel better. It's a really weird stage of life right now because I'm being very open 
with how I'm feeling with what I've gone through something that I've not done before like I will talk for England about my life and what I've gone through but I won't attach any emotions to it I completely disassociate and this is the first time in life where I've been open to not only people but to God truly about how I feel right now not like thanking God like this, this is where I've come right now and yes gratitude is important but God I feel rubbish right now like I've not done that on a consistent basis so it's it's a weird feeling because vulnerability is never nice being honest and putting things in the light will always make you feel a lot more stable the next question is how are you and your boyfriend and when will you marry <laughs> that's so funny that was priscilla that asked that question but how are me and my boyfriend? Me and my boyfriend are good. I'm now public about my boyfriend. So me and Naz are good. Um, when I filmed this video, I was like on the down low, but I had that viral post. I don't know how that happened. It got the most likes on my entire Instagram, like all over the Explorer page from people that don't even follow me. I mean, we are a pretty darn handsome couple. I'm certain photos now, like, I don't really blame people for liking it, but it did baffle me. We are really good right now. Very, very blessed for our relationship, blessed for the support that he gives me during hard times. Um, always praying that I'm able to give him support through his hard times. Um, we've definitely gone through a lot of hard times. Like people's first year is usually very simple. Like you have all the butterflies and not say I didn't have the butterflies, I most definitely did but it's usually smooth sailing. But it has been very beneficial, it's grown us so much. I wouldn't have it any other way. I've learned so much in our relationship already. We haven't even been together for a year yet. It's been what, like eight months? Obviously we've known each other for longer, but officially for eight months. I do wanna do a video with him at some point because a lot of people did ask questions about like how we keep boundaries, like how we got together, you know, like all the different questions like of Christian dating. Um, and I could answer those on my own, but I feel like it just would work if me and Naz were together. So I will persuade him to come on the channel because I know you guys would love that. The one question though that I will answer with just me on my own is how do you ensure that your relationship is not an idol? And this is something that I have raved on about since the dawn of this channel. Something that I didn't stick by because I've been turning relationships into idols. But I'm very, very, very extremely blessed that I have not had that with Naz and I think the pure reason for that is that I'm pursuing God way more than I'm pursuing him yes I love him yes I want to talk to him all day yes like I want to be around him I think about him all the time but I have made it and so has he we have made it our top priority to seek God first not just in our relationship because I think something that Christians do a lot is idolize a godly relationship not a godly life with god apart from your relationship with your boyfriend you know um yes we do pray together we do devotionals we do talk about god all the time and i'm very blessed for that but my relationship with god is not being fueled off of our relationship with god my relationship with god is being fueled by my personal relationship with god and vice versa so when we come together it reflects him deeper than just oh you know we pray together oh we read the bible together it's a lot harder to idolize a relationship when you are worshiping god more than you are speaking to that person and i know it's easier said than done because i love talking to Naz. i could talk to him all blooming day but i have to remember that my relationship with god holds so much more weight than he does when me and Naz first started dating we were obsessed with each other like we still are like I'm just always obsessed with him but like it was an unhealthy amount to the point where we would be on FaceTime all the time we talk all the time like we didn't really have time apart meaning that we didn't have our own personal time with God you know now we are very intentional about having two separate lives yes we FaceTime yes we talk on the phone a lot but when I'm reading my Bible, I'm reading my Bible. I'm not talking to Naz and vice versa. Like we give each other space to not only have a relationship with God, but do other things outside of each other. Um, because yeah, love is sweet, love is great, but it is not your life. So yeah, it's been really lovely to have that because I have always idolized relationships far too much. And I was thinking about it today, like when I was listening to worship music and, you know, just praying and everything. And I was like, wow, like I feel so secure 
in my relationship with Naz, but I don't have to hold tightly to feel like that. I'm holding tightly to God, but because I'm holding tightly to God, everything that is in God's will will naturally fall into place. So I do believe that me and Naz are called to be together. So because we're called to be together, I don't need to hold tightly. I don't need to try really hard to like have him the center of my life because I know that when I'm focusing on God, everything good flows from that. Next question is, what is your new job? And I don't think I've even talked about this on a video yet. I am a marketing assistant at a recruitment agency. If you know like job boards like Indeed or Read or CV Library, things like that, like I will write the ads to go on there. So a recruitment agency posts jobs for many different companies. Okay, my light just died. I guess we'll just carry on without it. But yeah, so I do have social media, half that, basically. And it's really nice. I do really enjoy it. I have a really nice team. Um, yeah. And that leads on to the next question, which is what career do you want to go down? Um, I was thinking about this the other day, and obviously the influence her, that is my dream. Like, it's still my dream. I've not dropped that. Like, I am so passionate about self-development, so passionate about faith. So that dream has never died. But in the sense of like a job is like, you know, the next few years, um, I don't know, like I love marketing. I want to stay in it for sure, like social media, but I am still so passionate about the self love aspect, like mental health. So I don't know if there's like a job that I could go down that would be like the two mixed together. I guess obviously, ideally it would be my own stuff because I can do marketing on social media and talk about the stuff I want to talk about. But those things are just, yeah, love both of those. Um, and I would love to do something where both those are incorporated. But yeah, I'm just allowing God to lead really. Like I used to be the type of person where like, I had to have my life planned out. I had to know exactly where I was going. Um, but nah, I don't, like I actually don't, I'm only 20 years old and I'm not gonna put that pressure on myself to know exactly what step I'm gonna take. Like as long as I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things, all of this advice, all of this wisdom, all these career paths will be added unto me in accordance with the will of God. So I just have to dwell in that and I'm not gonna strain so tightly as to where like I wanna be. The last question, what has God been saying to you in this season? Relax, stop trying, seek me first. I think a big thing that I am struggling with right now and have been, which I explained in the last video, which is just everything to do with my self-worth, which is so annoying because who is the one that raves on about self-worth all the time? Me. And who can't even understand self-worth for herself? Me. Am I a phony? Am I fake? Yeah. I'm joking, that's not nice. But point is, yeah, self-worth has been a really difficult thing for me to grasp. And like, I get it head knowledge it is so there it is there to the t i can be like dr phil straight in your face telling you why you should love yourself telling you to boss up telling you why you are a new creation in christ telling you why your body is temple of the holy spirit i can rave onto that like it is programmed into my my brain it is engraved in there i should have it tattooed on my forehead like for real but for some reason this little guy down here his ears are shut slowly opening but his ears are shut like there's a bunch of gunk in his ear earwax and all and it just can't hear a word that has gone up there so right now it is a whole thing of like head to heart knowledge that i'm trying to learn um and i think i've been so focused on having that head to heart knowledge come from self-righteousness and come from me trying and striving rather than just letting go just just submitting to the love of God. So that's been something that I've been trying to do recently and it has been really helping me just to be still and allow God to show me what he needs to show me. And then also I'd say I've been learning to walk into the future and to not be so focused on the past. Like I remember reading Isaiah 43 I think it's verse 18 to 19 where it says um forget the things of old behold i'm doing a new thing do you not perceive it i think i've gotten so accustomed to adjusting my life based off of what's happened in the past rather than just walking in who god has called me to be right now looking forward and not back so i am really just trying to like i saw this quote the other day about like romanticizing your life and not in the sense of like ignoring like being ignorant but like seeing your life as like just fun, seeing it as 
beautiful seeing it is cool like seeing the deeper meaning in everything like i was walking to the gym yesterday and i was just like yeah like i i want to feel like a girl in the movie i want to love my life i want to have fun i want to see the beauty of my life and everything i'm just focusing on today and tomorrow and you know the the promises that god has for me and it has really helped and like it's a weird thing to do at first because if you're so focused on your past which i have been like I have flashbacks all the time about my past and it just does me no good but it has been really nice to just be like yeah like this is my life right now like I'm living right now life is so good it's going to be so good like I have a relationship with God like just being thankful for what I have right now and being thankful for where I will be and have in the future I'm not fully there yet don't think I'll ever be fully there yet it is just a process but it is nice to know that, that process is processing it's loading the loading screen is moving it's not staying in the same place um which is is lovely but yeah that's all i hope you guys enjoyed it i love you guys so much thank you for supporting me through these really ghetto periods of my life and complicated time of my life where my videos just reflect that entirely um but yeah i'm just blessed and i hope to see you guys in the next video bye